If you've listened to this show long enough, you probably know I am not a big value chaser at pitcher because I just want to maximize points. And for the most part, value plays are value plays for a reason, especially at this point in the year. So for the most part, you know, I'll talk about one value pitcher per night, but they're not going to be the focal point for me when I'm building out my lineups. Tonight's very different. I think that when you look at the board for today, it's not just that. Some of the higher salaried guys are in rougher matchups, lower strikeout matchups that I don't really want to go at. But also, some of the lower salaried guys have juice comparable to those massive, massive studs. So it's a bit of a weird slate, but in a fun way. We can kind of have some fun with our hitters because of the salary afforded to us by those top pitching options. So let's dive on in, break it down, and get you set for a Thursday night slate. Welcome on into the solo shop. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Here to break down Thursday's eight-game main slate with locks up for 7.05 p.m. Eastern for today. I did say eight games. That is correct. Uh, usually when there's a double header, they will omit the second game of that doubleheader. They did not do that today for the uh, Cubs and the Cardinals. I believe they published this slate before that game got postponed. So uh, second game of Cubs Cardinals is in the slate. We'll talk about that in things to watch and uh, break down that later on. But just letting you know that it is a deviation from what they typically do on FanDuel with doubleheaders. We have awesome hitting conditions in Philadelphia tonight. It is 92 degrees, humid, and the winds are out to center at 10 miles per hour. That is a nice, nice, nice bump up to hitters for the Nationals and the Phillies. There is a chance of rain in Cleveland for the Guardians and the Astros. It looks like it'll be hitting right in the middle of that game. So check on the timeline of that later on. Those are the lone two weather notes for today. Hopefully uh, no weird, uh, weird delays, postponement stuff like we had last night with the Cardinals and the Cubs. We'll break down the pitching preview, stacks, and much more in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts because we have not just MLB, but also PGA, UFC, NASCAR, and NFL just around the corner all in the same feed. If you hit subscribe, you'll get those podcasts right as they are posted to maximize your digestion and research time before those slates lock. So find that wherever you get your podcasts. The NFL Week 1 odds are out, and now's the time to try FanDuel Sportsbook if you haven't already. Get in on the action early this season to get help get you started. New FanDuel Sportsbook customers can get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. Think your favorite team is making the playoffs? Who's your dark horse to win the rushing title? Odds for that and more are available on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Just sign up, place your first bet, and FanDuel will give you up to $1,000 back in free bets if you don't win. There's no better place to get ready for the football season than on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. Refund issued is non-withdrawable free bets that expire 14 days after receipt. Restricted supply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and Y. In Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-889-9789. In Wyoming, 1-800-522-4700, or in West Virginia, 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Pitching preview for this uh, Thursday. I could not remember what day it was. It's Thursday. Thursday main slate. Justin Verlander comes in at the top. He is $11,200 on FanDuel for today. Alec Manoa is 10-7. Kyle Wright is 10-4. Johnny Cueto comes in at $9,600. Carlos Carrasco's salary is 95. dollars We got Nick Pavetta at 93. dollars Sonny Gray at $9,000. And then Zach Plesak rounds at the top group. He is $8,400. Now, for cash games, I'm okay going at a plus matchup for tonight. Even if the pitcher is not perfect. And the... Pitcher not being perfect aspect of this is probably why this guy comes in as a value. So not only are we digging value plays tonight, we're digging value plays for cash games. And to me, that guy is Jeffrey Springs facing off with the Tigers. And I like him enough to use him for sure. 
the matchup part here is pretty obvious. The Tigers are a better offense against lefties than they are against righties. So it's not as advantageous for Springs as it would be for a righty, but they're still not great. 96 WRC plus against lefties, not a lot of power, low walk rate. Their strikeout rate is slightly better than league average, but that's the one area that they are doing okay in against lefties. Everything else lines up well for Springs, and Springs also has been pitching pretty decently. He's been using more sliders and fewer forcing fastballs in his past nine starts, and in that time, he has a 3.36 skill interactive ERA with a 26% strikeout rate. Both those numbers are almost identical to what Justin Verlander has as the top mark on this slate. But he's got a much better matchup than Verlander has. Springs facing the Tigers here. Verlander facing the Guardians. Super low strikeout team. Maybe some rain in that game. That does hurt Verlander for sure. The biggest issue with Springs and the key differentiator between him and, him and Verlander is pitch count. I've got Springs projected for 90 tonight. He's actually gone under that number in five of the nine starts in the stretch we're talking about here. He did have 102 before he spent some time on the IL, though. He went 92 last time out. So having him at 90 may actually be underselling him a tad. But that's enough for me, for sure. I've got Springs projected for 5.5 strikeouts. That is basically the same as Verlander. So the non-strikeout portion of this game is very good. Uh, for Springs, I'll be in on him here for sure. Again, his salary is $7,400. So I'm guessing it's because it's dragged down due to when he was a reliever. He's had some rough starts in there, some low pitch counts, but I feel good enough here to use Springs in cash, which doesn't happen very often. So take that for what it is. I just think that he is more intriguing than most value guys typically would be on a DFS slate. For tournaments, I am okay taking a risk, and that's by using a fun pitcher in a rough matchup. That's Carlos Carrasco facing the Braves, and I'm willing to give this one a swing in tournaments. The matchup here stinks. The Braves active roster has a 194 ISO against righties. That's the second best mark on the slate, so it's a rough spot. But the Braves will strike out. They have a 25% strikeout rate versus righties, which is the highest mark on the slate as well. So pitchers facing them have upside as long as they don't implode. That includes Carrasco, who's been throwing uh, a lot better recently. He has been improving his peripherals. He's throwing fewer four-seamers right now and more sliders across his past 10 starts. In that time, he has a 3.58 skill interactive ERA with a 25% strikeout rate. And this is a key against the Braves. He's keeping the fly ball rate in check. It's 32%. The results at least recently, have been really good for Carrasco. He's allowed no earned runs across his past three starts, and two of those were on the road. His overall ERA in this time is 3.95, so it's not all perfect, but he's got some strikeout juice. He has seven-plus strikeouts in five of these 10 games. He had 10 strikeouts in one, so it could blow up in the negative sense because the matchup is tough, but it also could blow up in the positive sense because Carrasco's getting some strikeouts and facing a high strikeout team. I think there is reason for hope here. I'm willing to give Carrasco a swing in tournaments. He actually is my uh, highest projected strikeout pitcher of the night. So as long as you're okay with the risk, I like Carrasco a lot for tournaments for tonight. And I will be going there for sure. Depends on my gauge of roster rate for Springs. If I go with Carrasco or Springs in single entry, but would not be shocked if I go Carrasco because uh, the matchup may scare some people away, even though he's pretty fun. The board is open for our third slot because Springs is the value play here at 74. I could go Verlander, but such a low strikeout matchup. I could go Noah Syndergaard against a weakened Nationals offense. I could go Alec Manoa against the Twins, but I'm going to have some fun here. Let's talk about Jose Quintana in his Cardinals debut. He's facing the Cubs tonight, and they're a good offense against lefties with a 114 WRC+, plus, but they will strike out. And Quintana is... Pitching pretty well as he comes over to his new team. We're up to 10 starts on Quintana with fewer sinkers. And in that time, he has a 3.78 skill interactive ERA. His strikeout rate is respectable at 22%. And he's also letting up just a 33% fly ball rate. So the underlying numbers are good for Quintana. The results have been good, I would say, at times. Um, he's had a couple blowups in here, but... Back-to-back -back starts with nowhere in runs. Uh, the couple blow-ups did come, one at Coors Field. One of those was on the road against the Braves. So rough outings there are pretty easy to understand. 
This isn't as difficult of a spot as those ones were at Coors or facing uh, the Braves. So I think that it's, you know, not not too bad of a spot. He did face the Cubs uh, back on June 23rd. Quintana did. He went six innings with two runs and six strikeouts. That's not that bad at all. If Verlander were in pretty much any other matchup, I'd go him. If Manoa were facing a less tough offense or if Byron Buxton were to sit tonight, then I would go Manoa. But with how things line up right now, I'm fine taking a discount and going with Quintana at 77. So two of the top three pitchers for me tonight are under $8,000 in Springs and Quintana. But I think with the way things set up, that's actually not the worst approach to take. So we'll see how things go. I think that that is uh, hopefully the right way to play things. We'll see how things shake out later on. That means we got a lot of salary to spend with stacks if we want to. The problem is not every stack I want to use is super high salary. It just kind of lets us use whichever guys we want to there. And that starts here with the Rays. The Rays are facing Drew Hutchinson tonight, and Hutchinson is a guy we can stack against. Hutchinson hasn't had awful results. He has a 4.50 ERA as a starter. He let up just one run across five innings against the Jays before leaving due to injury. But five innings, you know, that's pretty good. And he's allowed no, no more than four runs in any of his games. So the results for Hutchison are not bad. The peripherals leave a bit more to be desired. 5.27 skill interactive ERA in seven starts, 12% strikeout rate. Both those numbers rank last in the slate. The batted ball numbers are not good enough to cancel out the low strikeout rate and the rough skill interactive ERA. I'd expect the ERA for Hutchinson to get worse as the sample expands. The Rays down some good players. That does hurt for sure, but I still think it's it's a good enough matchup here to justify stacking and feeling okay about the Rays in this spot. So the Rays, to me, really good stack, despite the fact I don't really need to save some salary for tonight. Against Hutchison, I want to bump up the lefties. They have a 49% fly ball rate versus him this year, whereas righties are at just 32%. So great thing for Brandon Lau and Jimon Choi. I also really like David Peralta here. He has a 225 ISO versus righties. That is second on the team against Isaac Peretta or behind Isaac Paredes. 46% fly ball rate for Peralta too. So I think it makes sense to be heavy on him in this spot. Um, you know, another new team. Uh, we got Quintana on a new team. We had... All the Padres on a new team last night. We get um, Peralta on a new team here. I think let's just have some fun with those guys as well. So uh, the Rays, quality stack for tonight, including David Peralta. Cole Reagans is making his MLB debut for tonight. He's a lefty. And he's facing the White Sox. So welcome to the big leagues, kid. And it's not just the White Sox. It's a finally healthy White Sox lineup. Pretty tough spot. So I'm fine stacking against Reagans for tonight. Reagans started the year down in double A. He had a 31% strikeout rate down there and then got promoted up to triple A. He made eight starts there. Strikeout rate is 27% in triple A across eight starts, which is a pretty good number. His swing and strike rate there is 12.2%, which means he might struggle to get whiffs in the majors. The batted ball data in the minors is pretty similar to his strikeout numbers where it was fine. He had a 38% fly ball rate allowed in triple A. 40% in double A. So basically that means he's not a ground ball pitcher, which we like for stacking. I think he's probably going to be a guy who doesn't get a ton of strikeouts, doesn't get a ton of ground balls. And when you put a guy like that against a finally healthy White Sox lineup and they're a lefty, tough combination. So I think we should be stacking the situation. I think we can be high on the White Sox for tonight. And again, not a lot of... High salary guys here. Luis Robert is the highest salary guy in this team at $3,600. Nobody else above 33. So if you use Springs or Quintana, even Carrasco, honestly, you can just kind of pick your favorite guys here. So it's a fun feeling uh, to be in on the White Sox against lefties. Once again, I think that they're probably kind of back to being what they were previously. And I'm on board with that. So the White Sox facing a lefty MLB debut. We can go there for sure from a salary perspective. I will be doing so for tonight. Our third stack might feel kind of gross, but I think it's a good one, especially when you consider the weather. And that's the Phillies. The Phillies offense is underwhelming for sure. I'm not going to stack them super often, but I will do so tonight. They're facing Paolo Espino. And I think it's a good enough spot to go to the Phillies here, despite their imperfections. 
got an eight star sample on a speed note since he got fully stretched out in the rotation. And he's struggling with hard contact, letting up a 48% fly ball rate, which is the highest number on the slate. And it's more concerning when that number is paired with an elevated hard hit rate. That's a good recipe for home runs. And we've seen that with a Spino in the rotation. He's let up 11 home runs across his eight starts. And he's let up multiple home runs in half those starts, including four of the past six. One of those multi-homer games was against this Phillies offense back on July 5th. So, you know, it's not a familiarity spot. They didn't just see him, but they showed in that game they could do it there. This is also the third time they've seen him in this stretch. So I think the remaining pieces on the Phillies offense can get the job done. And as a result, I will be high on the Phillies here as they face a Spino once again for tonight. A Spino does have some weird reverse platoon splits where he lets up a 514 slugging percentage to righties versus 403 to lefties. I'm not sure if that will stick because the underlying data is much more even on both sides. So I think that what it does mean is we can not actively bump up lefties, just kind of keep both sides neutral. So pick the best guys, regardless of righty, lefty, whoever does best against righties, just use them. I think that's the way to play things here. So I'm not... Even though righties have hit a Spino hard, I'm not actively seeking out a guy like Alec Bohm who does not hit for power versus righties. I think Nick Castellanos might be improving. Had a home run last night, maybe slowly working his way back. But um, I think the overall takeaway here is don't actively bump down righties or bump up lefties. Just take the guys with the best numbers versus righties and deploy them liberally in this spot. Let's go now to things to watch for tonight. Typically, again, T FanDuel does not include double headers on a slate. They did for tonight, though. And the rough part is I'm not sure who's starting for the Cubs. It could be Caleb Killian. Sounds like he is on typical rest down in AAA. He got called up earlier on this year. He's on the 40 man. So if it is Killian, the Red, uh, the Cardinals are totally fine for stacking. I'm on board with them here, but don't honestly know who it will be as of right now because Justin Steele's moved to tomorrow. Marcus Stroman starting the first game of that doubleheader. The Red Sox starting to get healthier, uh, which makes them more fun in general, and they also don't get a bad matchup for tonight. They're facing Chris Bubich, who does not have the best peripherals, and I think that means we can use some Red Sox guys here. They're not bad for stacks, not bad for one-offs. Overall, I think the Red Sox could work here, and maybe if you've got spare salary, that could be a place you would turn to with the excess for tonight. If you want some one-offs, the other side of that game is also kind of fun. Nick Pavetta is starting for the Red Sox, and it seems like he's in a bit of a funk, letting up a, a lot of fly balls, a lot of hard contact. So Salvador Perez, and he's in a good spot. We can always get behind that. He's $3,300. I don't mind the younger guys once again either if you want some value. It's tough to stack them until they like differentiate the positional eligibility of some of these Royals guys because like effectively everybody is catcher slash first base so you can't really stack them honestly like you can use two of them but you can't use four so i can't do a full stack until they change up some positional eligibility but for now you know for one offs they do work uh just fine let's finish up here with some dinger calls for today the boring one will be kyle schwarber facing off with a spino we know uh what kind of stuff schwarber can do he is a guy who is a threat against pretty much anyone, but put him in a good spot here versus a Spino. And I think that Schwarber grades out really, really well from a Dinger perspective. So Kyle Schwarber is the boring home run call for today. The fun one, I got to think about for a second because I honestly forgot to write down. Usually I write these down beforehand. Um, did not do that for today. So the fun one... I could go with a White Sox guy, but I'm not sure any of them really qualify as being quote unquote fun. Um, you know, they're all pretty good in general. Um, a lot of the guys who might be fun aren't necessarily the biggest power bats uh, versus lefties. So the White Sox are kind of tough there in terms of uh, the fun, fun home run pick. I could go back to the Phillies for the second one, but I don't like doubling up all that much. Not necessarily want to do that. Um... I could go back to the Royals against uh, against Pavetta, potentially considering that. A lot of hard contact, a lot of fly balls. Could do a Royals guy. I think for the fun one, I kind of want to do MJ Melendez 
Uh, I think I might have done him a couple nights ago. Um, on the Royals, he's been hitting for power in the majors. He hasn't had one for a while, but um, hit for power in the minors, hit for power in the majors. Mason got lots of a lot of fly balls and a lot of hard contact. Not a bad combination. So let's just do it. Let's go with Kyle Schwarber and MJ Melendez as our home run calls for today. That is all that we have here for the solo shot for this Thursday slate back once again tomorrow to break down a Friday slate. But remember, remember, we got a lot of good stuff here on the number fire daily fantasy podcast feed between MLB, USC, NASCAR, PGA, NFL, just around the corner, all in one spot. So search for the number fire daily fantasy podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. And if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. If you have any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your DFS lineups. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down Friday Slate. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.